Do you use volume data to assist you with making your trading decisions? If the answer is no, then you could be missing out on vital intelligence to help you in your decision-making process. Alongside raw price action, volume data is a second piece of fundamental information that represents what is happening in the market at any point in time. Despite this, I would say that the majority of traders don't use volume data, and this effectively means they're only seeing half of the story. This is the start of another mini-series, and in this episode I'll be taking you through an introduction to volume data. Then, in future episodes I'll be exploring ways in which this can be used to help you make more informed decisions. Stay tuned. Before we can move on to some of the more advanced concepts, such as using volume data to assist your decision making around trading, we need to cover the basics of volume data. So let's make a start. When it comes to the information that's available to us as traders in order to help us with our decision making, for me, there are two dominant fundamental sources of information. The first of these is price action. And I would say that by far, this tends to be the dominant source of information that traders tend to use. And so you might be using this in its basic form, looking for patterns in that price data, or indeed using technical indicators based on the price. However, the second fundamental piece of information is volume data. And this can help to provide an additional dimension of information or intelligence about what is actually driving those price changes. If used properly, it can effectively change what is a two-dimensional picture into a three-dimensional picture and give us a much more detailed view of what's actually happening in the markets. Now, if you can interpret this volume data in conjunction with price action, it can help to provide additional predictive insights. But first, let's look at what volume is. In the most basic terms, it provides information about how much an asset is being traded. The volume gets calculated in a cumulative way during a set period of time. And so when you view volume data on a price chart, the bars for the volume use the same interval as the price data. So if you view the volume on a 15 minute chart, then each volume segment is split up into 15 minute periods. And this is what volume data looks like when you view it alongside that price action. So this particular representation of the volume data colors the bars in green if the volume has increased compared to the previous bar and red if it's decreased. But that's not always the case. Sometimes you just get one color across all of the volume data. Now, the first thing you have to realize is that not all volume data is the same. And we have two primary categories. The first is real volume and the second is tick volume. So let's firstly look at real volume. And this gives you the actual volume that was traded for a particular asset on a central exchange. So, for example, if you're trading futures, which of course Darwin X now supports, these tend to get traded on a central exchange. And so if you have access to this, then this is almost certainly the most reliable source of volume data. However, not all markets are traded on a central exchange. So, for example, Forex. There is no central exchange that's responsible for all trading activity. And so this simply means that real volume is impossible to obtain. And that's where tick volume comes in. This uses the number of recorded transactions from the interbank market data feed that's being used by your broker. And by transactions, I don't mean every single trade that's taken place. Instead, it's those transactions that have forced a change in either the bid or the ask price. 
effectively producing a new tick in the price data. And as you'll already know, in order to force a change in the price data requires all of the liquidity of the most preferable price to be used up. And when this new tick is generated, the volume gets incremented by one. And so using this mechanism, let's say over a 15 minute period, you have a tick volume of 1,500. What that means is that there have been 1,500 new ticks where the bid or the ask has changed during that period of time. Now, usually tick volume provides a reasonable approximation of real volume, but this is in relative terms. What do I mean by that? Well, if you looked at the pattern of volume using ticks and the pattern of real volume, they would look fairly similar, although the absolute values of each bar might be very different. But that's usually OK, because generally speaking, as you'll see as we move through this mini series, we're more interested in the relative changes in the volume and the patterns of the volume data than we are in the absolute values anyway. So tick volume is certainly something that we can work with. And as I said before, for things like Forex, it's the only alternative we have. Now, when you're viewing volume on a chart, they look identical in terms of the way that the information is presented. And both of them get segregated in the same way based on the period of the chart you're looking at. But because there are two types of volume, this means that when you add the volume information onto your chart, you're presented with a choice. And as you can see here, you usually have to choose whether you want to display tick or real volume. Now, you'll still get asked this question even if there's no real volume available. And likewise, if you add an indicator that's based on volume data, you'll get asked the same question. So for example, on balance volume is one of the most common volume based indicators. And here again, you can see how you need to select the appropriate category. So let's start talking about why volume data is useful. Well, as I said before, there are patterns to volume data and behavior. And when you view this in conjunction with the price action, that can provide additional insights into what the price action might do next. But just like with price action and price based indicators, volume and also volume based indicators will never always be right. And you need to think of them as probability based tools. So the way that you need to set out to use volume is to turn those probabilities a little bit more in your favor based on the added intelligence that they provide. So in the upcoming episodes, we're going to firstly concentrate on this concept of using volume data to assist our decision making. And in the next episode, I'll look at the very basic approaches to how you go through this process. We'll also be looking at common repeatable patterns that are observed in volume data. And just like repeatable patterns we see in price action, like trading ranges, like trends, breakouts, we can see similar patterns in volume data. So we'll be going through these. And later on in the series, I'll also be looking at how you can use raw volume data to assist your decision making, but also these volume based indicators such as on balance volume. And by using these indicators can give us those additional insights that we're after in order to turn those probabilities more in our favor. I really hope that you're as excited as I am on this new mini series on the use of volume data to improve our trading and improve the decisions that we're making. If you're not already a subscriber to the channel, then be sure to subscribe so that you get notified as new episodes become available. Also, I really appreciate it when you give me a like for the videos if you've got value from them. But now until next time, trade safe.